Okay, so I've been asked like eight times in the past two months, hey, what's a good starter turntable? I'm looking to buy someone a turntable for Christmas, but I'm gonna give you my picks, what I think are great turntables from my experience. When it comes to people getting into uh, vinyl and getting into physical music, it doesn't really matter at first what kind of turntable you get them unless you know how into the hobby they're gonna be. So if they're just going to be the average weekend listener, they just have it you know, to put on, on the shelf in their uh, living room as like a cool piece where for fun they're just gonna put on a record every now and then, you can pick up anything for them. Honestly, uh, I don't advise like investing into like a Crosley or, or, or the cheaper ones, um, Toria or one of the other brands. The really, really cheap ones, if you know, it's just kind of a, a cool present for them to every now and then listen to records. It's not that big of a deal. It's not going to completely destroy your records like some people say. But if you're going to be investing and in buying some new records along with it, and you think this person's actually going to spend some time listening to music on the turntable, Avoid Crosley, <laughs> avoid the cheaper stuff, avoid anything you get at like Big Lots or um, any of those you know discount stores, just avoid them. Uh, some good brands that I think are reputable uh, that you can get some entry level stuff with is going to be Audio-Technica. I've had quite a few Audio-Technica turntables, actually one of my turntables now is an Audio-Technica. But when it comes to entry level listeners, I recommend going with an automatic turntable to start. And there's all kinds of automatic turntables out there, but some of the more widely used ones, and there's all kinds of resources you can check out online for reviews, uh, are gonna be the Audio-Technica ATLP60, and the AT just stands for Audio-Technica, but the LP60, which is a belt-driven automatic turntable. That's the first turntable I've ever used. I got that for my wife for Christmas, I don't know, like five years ago, when we first started getting into collecting records and it is just so easy to use. Uh, there are some drawbacks it being a belt-driven turntable and there are some speed issues that can go up and down depending on uh, how often you use it and how often you move it. I have a video you can check out on how to fix that, but for you know 80 to $100, the LP60 is definitely worth the money and I've known a lot of people who started on the exact same turntable and they still use it to this day. They have upgraded, but they still have it. Now they make the LP60, they make the LP60 USB. So if you have like a friend who's more into tech or they wanna use their computer for reference, USB lets you take a direct audio signal out of the turntable to USB to your computer if you wanna record or if you wanna use your computer speakers or whatever. And then there's the LP60X, I believe it's called. And that's the redesigned version of the LP60. It's gonna cost a little bit more uh, but it is the newer version. I think they redid the tone arm and a few other uh, aspects of the turntable, but overall it's the same thing as a belt-driven automatic turntable. So check those ones out. And if you're looking to upgrade um, and have an automatic turntable that you can change the cartridge on and the needle and to have the weights on the tone arm and the anti-skating settings, I would go for the Audio-Technica LP3. But that's really cool because it, it's, it's a fully automatic turntable, but it has the option for you to upgrade the cartridge and use whatever you want. One of the biggest pain points with listening to vinyl is forgetting to, to turn it off on the manual ones, forgetting to lift the tone arm when the record's done. So there'll be times where it's like, I don't know, half a day and I still have that thing spinning because I put on a record and I'll get distracted with the kids or something. So having an automatic turntable, even if you're not a beginner, is kind of a nice feature. So that takes care of the automatic entry-level turntables. Uh, if you're looking for a manual starter turntable, one of the coolest companies that's come out in the past few years is called Fluence. They have a few different entry-level turntables that are manual, so if you know somebody who's gonna be a hobbyist, who's gonna be into it, and they want a manual experience, what? And you know they're gonna invest into their music and they want a high-quality turntable, the best bang for your buck is gonna be any of the Fluence turntables, their entry-level offerings. I think of the RT80, is one that you can get fairly cheap. A very reliable uh, turntable comes with a great Audio-Technica cartridge on it, uh, and that thing's gonna last a while. Yeah, so check out Fluence, and if there's, if you're not into Fluence, I would also recommend U-Turn Turntable. It's probably one of the most bare bones, uh, plain turntables you can get. It's the platter, It's you, the belt goes on the outside, it's extremely simple, there's no preamp built into it, fully manual, and you can modulate it to have better cartridges, I mean, 
There's all kinds of settings on it, but those are typically fairly affordable. So check out Orbit and the U-Turn. Entry level lines are great to get someone into this uh, hobby. So now we're gonna get into the mid level. That's where I'm at. I can't, I have a family, you know, and I, I just can't spend more than, a, you know, 800 bucks on a turntable and justify it right now. Uh, so I'm in the mid range right now in the mid level uh, tier of turntables and I'm very happy with what I have and I'm gonna go over some of my top picks but as far as mid-level turntables are concerned me personally I would recommend the Audio-Technica LP5 I've had that for about three years now I think I got in for like 500 bucks originally and then I upgraded the cartridge to the Ortofone 2M Red which is, I got it for 70 bucks. Oh, with the nice red shell that comes with it. So I've used a lot of belt-driven turntables and I just kind of got sick of the, the speed issues with it. And my friend has a Techniques that's, that's direct drive and I kind of fell in love with it. So I wanted something non-DJ oriented and this is a very clean turntable. There's only three settings on it. The terminals on the back, they're not integrated. So they're just female terminals. So you can use whatever cables you want with it. I can't stand when they have integrated RCA cables that come out and they're hardwired in there. It's so annoying. So the back of this thing is super clean. Uh, it's a direct drive turntable. It does have a built-in preamp, but you can bypass it. And most Audio-Technica turntables, when you bypass that built-in preamp, you still go through that preamp circuit and it colors the tone of the music coming out. With the LP5, it's a completely separate circuit. So when you turn off the preamp, you're literally going around that circuit. There's no coloration of the music at all. And that was one of the biggest sell, uh, sell points for me with this one. I was looking at the LP120 and I read so many bad reviews on the preamp. If you try to bypass it, you really have colored tone and you're gonna have to modify your turntable to get around that circuit, but they corrected it on this one. So the LP5, check it out. So if you're not into Audio-Technica though and you want something that's not uh, direct drive, you can check out the Project Debut Carbon series. There's like 50 of them and they're anywhere uh, from like 350 all the way up to $800 depending on the different model and configurations. Project Audio is like a great company. If I didn't have this Audio Technica, I would definitely go with one of theirs, especially their Sonos edition one that has like a walnut platter or plinth on it. Super cool. Uh, so check out Project and then if you don't want to uh, go that route, the other recommendation I have again is Fluence. Fluence has mid-level turntables that are just freaking killer. And for the price, like they come with the 2M uh, Ortofone Blue. And I think you can get one of them for like 400 bucks with the blue cartridge, it's, it's crazy. I don't know how they're comping the price so cheap on those. So check out the Fluence uh, set of turntables. And I think it's the RT83 through the RT85 are some of the great models. All right, so that's all I'm gonna cover for turntables. If you wanna get into high-end or advanced, well, first of all, I can't really even speak to that because I'm not going to claim I'm an expert in high-end turntables because I'm not, but you can go ahead and Google that and look at other videos. If you're going in a mid-level situation and you want a really good phono preamp, from my research, the Shit Manny, that's a really funny name, but it's uh, S-C-H-I-T-T, -T, I think, Manny, uh, Shit Manny phono preamp that you can get on Amazon.com for like about 120 bucks. I've seen some really good high-end comparisons on that, and hands down, that's your best bang for the buck. So I'm gonna link that below if you need a phono preamp to go into speakers or into uh, power speakers or into an amp. Uh, that's what you should look into. Aside from that project, they actually have the phono box, and that's about 100 to $200, I don't remember, but depending on where you get it from, that's a really good offering too. I saw some great reviews on that. Uh, MoFi has a phono preamp that they offer, but I read some eh, mid-level reviews on those. It, I heard it's not the best. And then they also have, uh, Fluence has <laughs> the PA10 high fidelity, they call it phono preamp, which I've heard wonderful things about that as well. So just heads up when you're going into the phono preamp area, if you're spending 50 to 150, you're probably gonna get a pretty good phono preamp. If you get one of the cheap ones on Amazon for like 20, 30 bucks, just be aware it's probably not gonna be that good. All right, so you just got a turntable for someone in your family, friend, loved one. You're excited about it, but now you're thinking, hmm, what am I gonna shove inside their stocking? Well, you can shove all kinds of things inside their stocking. Permitted size does matter. You can't, you know, shove a full turntable inside a stocking. But I do have some cool accessories you can put inside there. Um, so, easy stuff, easy cheap stuff. Record sleeves, right? Outer, inner, there's hundreds of them out there. Uh, I can put some links below, some really cool, easy record sleeves. Fold that pack in half, put it right inside the stocking, you're done. Stuffer right there. Record cleaner. 
they're gonna need to clean their records. Even if they're casual listeners, those records get dirty, and if you get them cleaner, they probably will use it. Good habit to get into, then this can fit right inside of that stocking. Brushes, or cleaners, or sponges. Uh, this one's the audio technical one, you can get this at Best Buy, I did a review on it. Uh, get them something to go with the cleaner to clean the records off. So this sponge here, just Records clean, they're good to go, let it dry. This can fit right inside the stocking, super fun accessory, and it's not gonna break the bank. This can be the most important piece of it, be the most important accessory ever when it comes to listening to music, and that is a carbon fiber brush. Carbon fiber bristles, get something with a stainless steel base or a copper base, some kind of conductive base uh, that you hold on to, because this will discharge the static electricity which can cause pops static, all kinds of noise on your records. These can be fairly cheap. I got this one on Amazon. It's called Reloop, uh, and this has been uh, tried and true. I've used this every single day. I use this every single time I listen to a record, and this is nice and small. You can fit it right inside of that stocking. All right, if it comes to uh, cleaning records, you need to clean that needle, and you can use a brush. You can use any kind of technique. I've even seen people use like magic eraser, but you want to be careful because you can actually wear down layers of the needle. So what I found, is this, the Anzao Zero Dust. I know that sounds really epic, but it's just literally this gelatinous substance that's about an inch in diameter in the little cube here. Uh, and you just press it right against the needle, like that, pull it off, and it will take all that fuzz, all that grime, all that nasty nitty gritty stuff on your needle right off. So I just tap it twice, maybe once a week, and that takes care of that. This is very small and it's only cost about 30 bucks and you can put that right in the stocking and they go, you can put this in the very bottom of the stocking, you get the candy, toothbrushes, like, oh, what? What? I got an Onzao Zero Dust in here? Get out of here. All right, so you can get that one. Something else that's really fun and really cheap that you can get, well, not really cheap, but something really fun you can get is slip mats. There's all kinds of different slip mats out there. Go online, look for them. You can get one of their favorite band. They like Tool, get them a Tool slip mat. They like Coding Cambria, get them a Coding Cambria slip mat. They like you, put your face on a slip mat. You can actually print yourself on a slip mat. They make custom slip mats. Um, different types, I like cork, I like rubber, I like, uh, this one's felt. Um, there's all kinds of different ones, so it's up to you. They're fun, they're cheap, and if you wanna put that in the stocking, go ahead, roll it up like a burrito, stick it in the stocking, and surprise them on Christmas Day. Uh, I have a bunch of other accessories I could list down here that you can fit inside a stocking, but this one is uh, a nice, fun tool to use. It's called Label Saver, and you essentially just clamp two sides of this down on a record, and you can get it wet, and it doesn't get the label wet, so if you're cleaning or going through some really old records, this is a must-have. So I wanted to keep this quick. These are the stocking stuffers. I'm going to put some more links down at the bottom for accessories. And yeah, I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday season and a happy new year. I hope 2020 brings you prosperity and joy. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, go ahead and give me a like, a little thumbs up, give me a subscribe too, so you can watch my future videos. Uh, again, sorry for the huge break, but I was super sick. So I'm healthy now and hopefully I can make more videos. I can tell you to expect a lot more background noise because my kids are getting older and while I do these for fun, uh, they're always you know, getting crazy in the background. So. Until next time, I'm Michael, and you're watching Vinyl for Miles.